Okay, welcome back to another round of Moderator Prep Source Review. Uh, this time we're going over a book called White Shift by Eric Kaufman. This is in preparation for a discussion on immigration, national sovereignty, and populism with uh, Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Cunliffe. Uh, so the motivation behind reading this is, uh, one, uh, it's a book by one of the people that will be speaking, uh, Dr. Kaufman. Uh, and then the other is that it deals precisely with uh, the nature of the conversation. Uh, so the, the book is an attempt to explain populism um, and the some of the roots and sentiment behind it, uh, mainly calling out that immigration is one of the, the biggest underlying factors in the rise of populism uh, in white majority countries. So uh, the book is fairly long, it's thick. Um, it's got a lot of information and it's very extensive both on the on the data side and on the history side uh, so I could spend a lot of time but in order in the interest of just keeping it short I'm gonna kinda go through it at a very high level uh, but I do recommend reading it as it contains a lot of information on the subject so um, the book is is broken up into several parts uh, there's a whole part dealing with uh, well it's called fight but it's basically the resistance to uh, immigration and to traditional changes in these countries. There's another called repress, which is about trying to, as it sounds, repress or get rid of the desire to fight or uh, really the the um, sort of instability uh, with the idea that uh, there's a lot of immigration. It's just trying to, to tamp that down. Uh, the next session is called flee, which is about uh, white majorities or white uh, groups kind of fleeing off to their own enclaves away from uh, the rest of more minority driven society. Uh, and then lastly, there's a, a section called join, which is really about intermarriage uh, between whites and uh, minorities and so forth. Um, so breaking this down, the fight section uh, is interesting. It gives, it starts off with a history and it goes kind of back to the uh, sort of original first century of uh, the United States of America. And uh, basically what the book says is the, the United States started off as a British Protestant uh, country first and foremost. It was founded by people who were from Britain who were Protestant and it really contained uh, the, the majority was basically British Protestant uh, whites for the, the majority of that century and that kind of turned and eventually there was an Irish Catholic uh, Southern German Catholic and uh, Italian you know all those groups basically started coming in and much like today there was uh, resistance a, a really a, a debate there was a resistance of that change and then also uh, a group calling for that change so it's kind of similar today in that sense but ultimately, uh, what uh, what the book illustrates is that this faded through intermarriage. But uh, a key part of that fade was that those groups also uh, took on some of the cultural aspects of the Protestant tradition. Uh, so that's kind of where you get the whole WASP uh, part of America, kind of, of of the earlier part of America. But basically, these groups came in, they intermarried, and... Uh, they assimilated. Uh, so that's kind of the first part of the fight section. The next part gets into distinguishing between, uh, or it really introduces the idea of ethno-traditional nationalism, uh, which is kind of a complex term, but it's trying to distinguish between racism and uh, just one's preference for one's own culture in a benign way. Um, and so it says that essentially the, what the book is saying is that the the majority of people who are, who are resistant to immigration are really motivated by ethno traditional nationalism, not an out and out uh, racism for the other side. And it's really just this desire to preserve one's culture uh, in the face of sort of a rampant change of that culture when there's a lot of immigration. Um, and so that's what the book locates is, is really the cause of the populist backlash across several countries, uh, being Trump and the United States, uh, the Brexit situation, 
uh, in the UK, uh, the host of different populist up, um, well, really popularity in several other countries, uh, and then also to a certain extent in Canada. Although there's a key uh, mention that Canada has a lot less uh, of a of a clear back backlash uh, just because it doesn't have as much of a distinct culture. That's sort of the takeaway I got. Now, um, he specifically mentions that with regard to to uh, British Protestant, Protestant Canada or really the non-Quebec Canada. And he actually points out how the Quebec Canada is much more uh, nationalist and self-interested than the British part, which has a little bit less of a tradition of an ethno tradition to fall back on, um, especially uh, more recently. Uh, so that's the kind of the fight part of this. It's the main takeaway is just that, um, you know, there is a tie to culture and tradition. Uh, that's not necessarily the same thing as racism. We'll kind of come back to that a little bit more. Um, and that this is sort of something that's happened and been fixed uh, over time so long as the immigration has stayed at a reasonable level where people can assimilate and it doesn't destabilize society too much or lead to some sort of backlash. Um, the rep repress section of the book is all about dealing with uh, this sort of leftist cosmopolitanism, uh, which, the, which Kaufman ultimately argues has gone too far. But he starts out with a history of this and locates a history of it starting more or less with uh, bohemian intellectuals in New York in the early 1900s. And he talks about how on, on one end you had kind of the whole group was experimenting with completely different uh, sort of, you know, anti-culture, just breaking down of tradition and trying to go full scale, you know, anti-tradition towards something new. Whereas a different part of the group does that solely for the WASP group, but embraces uh, the sort of cultural identity of other cultures. So this is kind of what gives birth to uh, what he calls, um, I'm going to miss up the name here slightly, but uh, it's basically an imbalanced multiculturalism or a, an, maybe even an illiberal multiculturalism where on the one hand, uh, you know, WASP and white majority culture has to be put down and eviscerated but when it comes to minorities uh, those need to those cultures need to be preserved and insulated from any sort of change and so he sees this as ultimately uneven and also uh, locates this as uh, the cause of a lot of the resentment and the sense of unfairness on the part of white majorities ultimately leading to again this populism uh, backlash that happens um, again, in this chapter, he does a, uh, he spends some time talking about the, the difference between racism, which is sort of a, he defines it as a, an irrational hatred or prejudice against people of a certain race, and then also, uh, in addition, a, an unequal treatment of them, uh, of people from different races under a legal system. So it's, it's an acted out prejudice uh, with legal backing. And it's also what he would call it. He would call it irrational. Um, but he distinguishes that from ethno-traditional nationalism and in-group preference, which he says is pretty much common to everybody. Um, and he also draws on some uh, sociological literature that shows that you can have clear uh, love and affinity for your own particular uh, race or ethnic tradition without having to hate a different one. Uh, the sort of hate for another culture uh, only happens in a zero-sum game situation where you have to pick one side or the other. Um, so anyway, the point is basically uh, of this chapter is to discredit uh, left modernism and he just he sees it as fundamentally illogical and not really working out. Um, so then we get to the flea part. Uh, this really just highlights that as a result of a lot of this um, sort of rising uh, ethnic and tradition change, uh, whites have actually begun to segregate themselves. And what's interesting about this is that it uh, the segregation happens for both uh, liberals 
and conservative. So it doesn't really matter whether you're open to immigration or not. Uh, on average, you're still leaving to an, a white enclave. The other thing that's interesting about uh, this is that it seems to be primarily a white phenomenon, meaning that other uh, minority groups don't really feel the need to move to their own location. Uh, it's really just whites who are fleeing to their own uh, sort of enclave. And one of the reasons he, he says this might be the case is just that uh, whites, they're used to a situation where they're the majority in in the place that they live. And so when that changes, they're kind of looking to go back to the, their status quo. And again, this is regardless of whether uh, you're pro or against immigration, the the trend is the same. Uh, the last section basically covers intermarriage and, uh, well, it talks about intermarriage. Uh, it touch, it kind of explores the, um, the white genocide, uh, the so-called white genocide uh, theory. And then lastly, goes over sort of a, an inclusive uh, majority that he predicts is going to be the future of many of these societies. So on the intermarriage front, his basic point is uh, you know, intermarrying is happening both on the white side and on the minority side. So what you're ending up with is really not uh, a future salad situation where there's sort of distinct uh, ethnic groups that are mixed, but don't, uh, or that are really mixed together in society, but don't intermingle with themselves. In, in fact, it's more like a milkshake where everything kind of gets added together and blended. Um, he does talk about the white extinction, uh, which is something that is a, a more of a far right or a hard right um, theory and worry. Um, and he he does outline where there are some credible items to this, uh, and he, he makes a what I think is a uh, a good call by saying that most theories or ideologies start with some level of truth, and you need to kind of work down from where they're truthful uh, to where maybe it gets less and less uh, credible. And so uh, he, he goes through and does a good job kind of piecing that up, uh, apart and pointing out where that where it makes sense and where it doesn't make sense. But ultimately his point with that is, you know, the, the white as a race is ultimately not going away uh, really anytime soon. Um, and he points to several reasons for this. One, he thinks that the, the term white will ultimately expand. I'll touch on that in a second. And then second, there are uh, strong enclaves of, of pretty strict white only, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, breeding happening. The white population uh, in Eastern Europe is fairly uh, insulated and enclaved. So that's not going away and will continue to be kind of, a, a I guess, a in the strictest sense of the word, a, a, a white uh, set of countries and a, and a white population. And then uh, also he talks about certain uh, orthodox religious groups like the Amish or the Huddites who have extremely high fertility rates uh, who really only intermarry among their own groups and says, look, these people aren't going anywhere. Um, you know, they're, they're still going to be around. So overall, uh, he he doesn't see any sort of hard line extinction of the the white race anytime soon, um, barring some sort of war or like you know actual hot war type of thing. Um, this is just strictly off the numbers. Um, so then, lastly, he sort of this is sort of the culminating piece of the work. It kind of comes full circle, and he's arguing that ultimately what's going to happen is you'll end up with. Um, a, a strong mixing of all of these immigrants within white majority countries. And because there's going to be a high level of, uh, uh, of mixing and then also the need for cultural signs and symbols, he ultimately looks, looks, uh, or I guess rather argues that, uh, there will be an assimilating effect here. And much like, uh, the country went from being wasp to a white country, uh, you know, where the, other uh, whites with uh, distinct heritages kind of meshed together and ultimately had a, an American identity form, uh, he sees the same thing happening, uh, again, just with more mixed race uh, 
um, individuals. So the idea is basically uh, there will a mixed race majority will form, but it'll have a white identity uh, in the sense that people will look at each other. The the definition of white will expand to include those people, and then the sort of ethno tradition and culture uh, will come from uh, what is considered white culture today. So if you're in America, you're still going to be, you're going to still hold up the founding fathers, uh, sort of the original constitution position and everything that basically are symbols and markers of American tradition and culture will basically be adopted by that group. And then likewise in Europe, uh, where there's been heavy immigration, all of the people uh, there that are intermarrying and mixing will ultimately take on the national, uh, the, the heritage of the national character of those cultures. So that's kind of his uh, prediction. And ultimately, you know, I think he sees this as the best case scenario and also the most likely scenario. Um, so anyway, that's that's probably the, the quickest I could do this. It is a big book. I would highly recommend reading it. It's very relevant has a lot of information and a lot of research. He definitely uh, spent a lot of time making this. So um, if you want to get educated on the topic, I highly recommend it.